Tommy Torres of Fright Box recording here to share with you my all time favorite mix harshness removal trick. Now, two of the most common problems that we all face while mixing, especially within a DAW, is mix muddiness and mix harshness. And I found and have been guilty of myself making the process way more complicated than it needs to be. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to share with you my extremely simple technique for removing harshness from a rock or metal mix, or actually any mix for that matter. So I have an audio sample here by my good friends in a band called Toy Machine. I will leave a link below to their music within this video's description. Now, even though this mix came together pretty easily, I found there to be a little bit of harshness present in the raw tracks that I just needed to take care of before the mix was mastered. So let's check out the mix and I'll show you exactly what I did. Let's check it out. Okay, in my opinion, that's a pretty warm, smooth sounding mix. It's big, fat, pretty analog sounding, which is what I'm usually going for. So the question is, what did I do to warm it up? Well, the truth is what I did was extremely simple. So simple that people rarely think to even do it. Now, I found that people either tend to make things overly complicated or try to do things in an overly simplistic way, like sticking an EQ on your master fader and doing a bunch of EQ there. I found that the answer lies in between. So for example, in this mix, I found there to be a little bit too much harshness, just a little bit too much coldness happening in the mid range, which is in general where harshness lies, especially if you have a decent sounding rough mix or a decent sounding tracks that you're working with. So I found that the drums are hitting just a little too hard in the 2K range. The same thing for the bass guitar, the clank on the bass guitar, and the same thing for the rhythm guitars. So if you look here, here is my drum stem. Now in my sessions, I have tracks called stem tracks where I route all of those corresponding instruments, like the instruments themselves, along with all of their sound effects to a final stage called a stem track before it hits my master fader. Think of them as master faders for individual groups of instruments. Now I would call them submixes, but generally submixes do not include send effects and my stem tracks do. So in other words, if I play the mix back and I mute the drums, you will hear all drum related elements being muted, including the reverb. Check this out. Yeah, so any verb I'm using on the drums along with the room mics are all being muted. And the same go for guitar, guitar delays, vocal, vocal delays, any effects that are corresponding to a specific instrument group. Now, the powerful thing about using these stem tracks is that if you have to do something like remove harshness, you could do it on a global scale for that particular group of instruments. So for example, I felt that the drums were hitting a little too hard in the 2K range, and instead of me having to go into the snare drum or go to the drum submix, I could do it all on my stem track. So here is the EQ on my drum stem. And if you look at 2K, I'm pulling out just one dB, a very subtle move, but it's super powerful because it's doing it to my entire drum sound as a whole. Again, including all of the related effects that correspond with my drums. Now let's take a look at my bass stem. I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm pulling out around 2K on my bass stem. And let's take a look at my guitar stem. Same thing, except on the guitar stem, I'm using a slightly wider bell shape because I felt that a lot of that mid range was really a little too hard on the guitars. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna play the track back and I'm gonna bypass this EQ cut on all of my stem tracks so you could hear just how much of an effect it has on the overall mix. Let's check it out. So as you can hear, that simple EQ cut really warmed up my mix and got rid of that harshness. And I was doing minuscule, very subtle moves on the actual stem tracks. In my opinion, this is where the magic is at. Not going crazy or over complicating things by doing a broad stroke EQ move like this on your individual tracks and not doing something as extreme and overly simplistic as trying to do it on your master fader. 
Now, even though the EQ cut was very similar on my drums and bass track, it was a little different on my guitar track. This is why this wouldn't work on my master fader. Each of the individual submixes or individual stem tracks needed slightly different EQ cuts. Now, this is something I don't do all the time. I don't generally cut around 2K on my stem track, but if the mix calls for it, I have no problem doing it. The better you get your mix at the source, the less you have to do in mastering. And I like to do next to nothing in mastering. I try to get it all done within the mix itself. Now I know this might seem really simple and straightforward, but believe me, this is the simple stuff that people tend to overlook because they're often caught up in auditioning different plugins, overcomplicating the process using analog simulation plugins, all kinds of crazy stuff. When in reality, all it really took with a stock plugin was cutting a little bit of that mid range that was harsh in my three main instrument groups drums, bass, and guitars. No fancy trickery on the instruments themselves and no fancy trickery on the master bus. So I'm curious to know, do you have issues with your mixes sounding harsh or muddy? Leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know your opinion. I'd love to hear it. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. If you dug the guitar tone in this video, you could download the exact same impulse response that I used in the production by clicking on the link below for absolutely free. Download the IR, load it into your Amsem plugin and get right to dialing in killer metal guitar tone or hard rock guitar tone with absolute ease. Until next time, happy mixing.